Wizards get a lot more abilities as they level up, uh, and if they specialise in a particular school, they get even more than that. Um, you don't get penalised anymore by saying you cannot learn from these particular schools whatsoever. What they do say is these schools that you get are prohibited based upon what specialisation you took. And if you learn spells from them, that's fine. If you memorise any spells from that particular school, then you immediately lose all the advantages you had got from your school. And you get them back the day after if you took them out of your spell rotation. Which is a nice way of doing it. It doesn't limit you down. So if you've got an invoker who can't do divination spells because it's part of his restricted school but the plot really needs someone to be scried then he can go to the shop or speak to another wizard learn the scry spell put it in his spell book and cast it and granted the day he learns it and the day he casts it he can't do any of the uber stuff that invokers can do but he can still cast the spell which will help advance the plot so that's a lot of fun sorcerers have been changed in the fact that their source of magic has now been identified you pick at the starting character where your magic has come from and it does actually to some degree affect your spell list so i have to excuse the noise in the background it sounds like the radiators just turn themselves on that is actually quite loud we'll just go through it anyway um so you you'll get a different set of spells depending on where your so your source of power comes from be it on dead be it a fey creatures dragons you know celestial creatures things like that even demonic creatures so there is all of that it's a bit like how warlock works in fourth edition but that's where the similarity ends um clerics have now got the ability to channel positive energy they don't turn dead anymore they channel positive energy which does have the same influence on undead in the fact that it makes them run away um it also damages them as well and it will also heal any living creature in a particular area now with a particular feat you can limit to who is healed in that area because it's a blanket effect and it does go up in levels, so basically what clerics do is they sacrifice turning attempts per day to do a area of effect heal, which means they can heal between fights or even in fights and cover the entire group, which is quite nice. Uh, druids, mm, not particularly being altered that much, you can sacrifice your companion to have the nature domain and all the benefits that go with it domains do work differently in the fact they don't give you a spell list they give you abilities at certain levels um, and they, those particular abilities are quite nice in fact you don't get one every level as well which is a bit of a shame but there you go feats are more commonplace the feats that are in the book have been changed to some small degree dodge is now universal as opposed to targeted so you can dodge all attacks of all creatures uh, cleave works differently in the fact that you're sacrificing your multiple attacks to make one powerful attack against all your opponents. Uh, power attack in the book is that you completely strip out your base attack bonus and you get that as a plus. Uh, there have been some debate on the forums about that. Uh, I agree with it personally that that is excessive and doesn't need to be done. Um, the one victim of all this is a paladin. Now the paladin has been largely unchanged. There are a couple of minor tweaks to it, but when you consider the overall power increase that all the other classes have had, the fact they can smite good once a day as a first off character is kind of pathetic compared to the damage output a fighter has or a barbarian has, things like that. So a lot, of, a lot of grief being going out about that. Hopefully that'll be fixed in the official release because this is still the beta. Um, fighters, in my opinion, may be a little too overpowered. Um, a fighter wearing no magic arm whatsoever um, and just wearing full plate with a nice big chosty shield at uh, 20th level can have an armor class. This is a, not supplemented by magic whatsoever. Have an armor class of about 30. This is give or take, but about 30. Uh, depending on the dexterity. Uh, because of the way their armor training works so that uh, may be a little too overpowered although it is very good for low magic games which is what I tend to run at the moment because I run Ravenloft how it works in a high fantasy game I'm not quite sure uh, there's nothing more daunting to a GM than a one particular character in the party with a 9 unbreakable armor class to which point to hurt them you have to introduce monsters that can potentially one shot or never miss the entire rest of the party so there is that to consider. Uh, there are a couple of bugs to be ironed out, but like I say, it is a beta. They have overall the skill system. A lot of skills have been amalgamated. Spot and listen now perception. 
hide and move sound and now stealth. Um, th things like that, basically. A lot of things that were commonly associated with each other being amalgamated together. Concentration is now part of spellcraft. Um, because, to be honest with you, the only reason why anyone took concentration is so they can cast spells in a combat situation. And it kind of was a dump stat because once you got to a certain level, you didn't need it anymore at all, regardless of what negative modifiers your GM wished to put on you. So I'm happy about that. Also, they changed how the skill points work as well. You don't get that times four effect at first level. Instead, what happens is that if you you can put the skill points anywhere you want, you can't have more skill points in a particular skill than you have levels. So if you're level three, you can't have more than three skill points in a particular skill. But if the skill you have picked and put points into is a class skill, you get a arbitrary plus three, which is nice. As a similar thing with Star Wars, Saga Edition, I'll go into that later when I get my hands on a copy. Because I've been playing it, I just I need, I need to get my hands on a copy to properly review it. Oh, T. Oh, by the way, little advert side note. Those of you who are interested, this particular, there we go, Cthulhu esque mug with the words tentacles written on it. It's hand carved, and to give you a size comparison, there we go. That's a regular cup, and that is the mug. There we go. This can now be bought, for those of you who live in the UK, from Leisure Games for £20. Not this particular one, uh, because they are hand-painted, so I'm assuming there is going to be some individuality to them, and I believe this is exclusive for the Tentacles Convention, but you can get a Cthulhu mug like this for 20 quid from Leisure Games. Advert over. So, what do I think about Pathfinder. I really like it. Um, I had massive issues with 3.5 towards the end of its life cycle uh, in the fact that I was finding more and more problems with it. In fact I pretty much stopped playing 3.5 Dungeon Dragons or Dungeon Dragons in general for about six months because of the issues I was having with it. Because at one point I could only see the formulas behind it which is a bit of a GM thing really. Um, but there was a lot of issues I was trying to overcome with house rules. Uh, skill points were a big issue for me, the fact that you were very restricted as to what skills you could have uh, depending on your class which seemed more and more arbitrary the more I looked into it. Um, I didn't like how wizards worked uh, with regards to familiars. Uh, I liked the idea of having a familiar, I also liked the idea of a staff that you were bound to the player. That has all been taken care of. Um, skill points. Yeah. So a lot of the little house rules I brought into effect, I think there was about four house rules I brought into effect that were being completely eliminated by fourth edition, uh, by Pathfinder, sorry. Whereby being that they have released something that's not cl either close or exactly what I was looking at. And resolved the issue completely. Uh, there is only one house rule that's still in effect in my gaming table. It's a Ravenloft house rule, which is basically that gunpowder weapons will overcome the first four points of armour that anyone is wearing be it natural armour, armour or magic armour. The reason being obviously that um, the rules that are currently written at the moment for gunpowder weapons in 3.5, they're just expensive crossbows. I mean very expensive crossbows which is, with a slight increase in damage and there's no reason why anyone would take one unless I gave some kind of inherent bonus to it. Because the dangers of carrying black powder, as you well know, especially when you're getting fireballed, are considerable. 